Hello, fellow Whovians. Welcome back to the Crash Hub. I am Kayla, here the host of Cafe Crashdown, and we are here to talk about the last episode, the big finale, Empire of Death, of season 14 of Doctor Who. We have so much to talk about. We got a reveal of Ruby's mom. We got a little bit of a reveal of Mrs. Flood. It wasn't like confirmed, but I know exactly who Mrs. Flood is. Very excited to talk about that. We got a lot of the God of Death. We had so many things in this episode. I am so excited to talk about it. So let's roll those credits. dudes. I got my coffee. I thought that this was a really good episode to just, you know, let's chill. It's a finale. We made it. Okay. We went on this journey of this new season, this new reboot of Doctor Who. And I am excited to do a rewatch of this whole season. Now that we know how it ended, I think the payoff for me personally was worth it. I really love this episode. And so I think going back and rewatching this whole season now and seeing how it all leads up to this final moment, I think I'm gonna enjoy the season a lot more. So uh, definitely look for that in the future. I would say in like a week or two, I'll be doing a full season review of this latest season of Doctor Who so we can talk about the the major hits that we had, some of the misses and, and things that we're looking forward to or um, theories that we may have kind of moving forward with this new phase of Doctor Who. to this latest episode, Empire of Death, which when we got the name of this episode, you're like, okay, we know what we're getting, just <laughs> absolute destruction. And sure enough, we start with the death dust coming down. It's basically the blip, let's be real. It's like Thanos snapping his fingers and people just turning into dust. But this is on a mass scale. This is literally in every universe, in every aspect of time, that the doctor has ever traveled. Because what we find out, which I thought was really cool and really crazy, is due to the TARDIS's cloaking mechanisms, uh, Sutak decided to jump onto the TARDIS in the time vortex and cloak himself on the TARDIS. And he joined the doctor in all of these adventures that we have seen him since we met him in Pyramid of Mars. So this guy's been getting around. He's been hanging out. He's been watching. He's been learning and analyzing the TARDIS learning more about his big foe, the doctor. I thought that was so cool. Like what a reveal, like damn, <laughs> that's some dedication, you know? So he was ready. He came in with a plan. He was planting all of his dead agents all over the place, just planting that seed and waiting for them to sprout, waiting for that moment to activate. And yeah, so he ends up activating them and activating his death dust. And we've got suns dying and planets just dying and it's timelines are dying. Absolute destruction. Absolutely what I would expect from the God of death. So, I mean, I guess bravo to you, sir, but damn. So yeah, all of our babes are dying. You know, we've got little gibbons, which, okay, I do have to talk about this, how like, in the beginning when they're like trying to shoot at Sutek, which you know is not gonna do anything. He's a god of death. Like, come on, your guns aren't gonna do shit. But you know, they're doing what, you know, they do. And so they shoot at the TARDIS and I had to laugh with Gibbons with like his little scooter that like that also had a gun and he was just like da 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 da. <laughs> that was really funny. But yeah, so everybody in unit, they all perish, which I was like, no, no, Rose, no, Gibbons, Kate. It was so sad. And Ruby has no idea what's going on. She was still stuck in the time window trying to figure out who the heck her mom was and what's going on. But in a way, this was kind of protecting her, which we find out more about why she wasn't touched yet. And same with the doctor, because Sutek also wants to know who her mom is, which we're like, okay, who is this mom? If like the God of death also can't figure out who the heck she is and wants to know the same mystery. So we find out again, that is why the doctor and Ruby are still alive because they want them to also figure this out for him to get this information. I'm guessing that he's thinking that Ruby's mom is this like other big bad that could be like, you know, total rival to this God of death. I don't know. Um, but he's like, 
completely confused and mystified by this mystery himself. So I thought that was very interesting. We also got a lot of secret agent Mel on her freaking Vespa, just taking the doctor like, come on, dude, we gotta go and we're scooting along. Um, and you know, Mel was really great in this episode. It was fun to have her uh, be part of this journey, you know, sad with, in that instance, you know, kind of how it played out for her, but of course it all works out at the end, you know pretty little bow, but it was really cool. And it was what was really fun too, was to see this memory TARDIS, uh, which was brought back by Ruby's memories. Her thoughts and memories was what basically recreated this other TARDIS that they were able to use, which definitely was a little junky, a little rough, um, <laughs> definitely rigged up, which I was like, oh my God, that's the story of my life. <laughs> just things just completely rigged up. Uh, but you know, they made it work. They used it and built it to the best of their ability. And so it was cool being in the TARDIS and just seeing like all this junk and collection everywhere, which I also feel like is very me. Uh, you know, I like to collect things, not that I'm a hoarder, but I like to collect little trinkets and things like that. So I was, I was like, okay, I feel you, I feel you. He finds his whistle, which I was like, oh, is this gonna be like his Fez hat, you know? And he ends up using it at the end, which we love. Uh, and Mel finds some of her old clothes, which is really cool and very heartwarming. So it was like a little treasure trove of Doctor Who, for Doctor Who nerds, basically. So we also get a callback to 73 Yards and the tie to that episode. So again, when I said in the beginning, how I'm really excited for this rewatch is because now we know how things ended up and you know they already mentioned 73 yards in this one I really just want to see how it all kind of ties in and comes together so talking about 73 yards and the, that terrible prime minister like the worst prime minister in history one of his things that he had was DNA testing for everybody um, which is terrifying but also a benefit to Ruby because she is then able to eventually get the name of her mom, although it doesn't fully play out like that for Sutek, uh, which was another fun thing that Ruby did. I was like, hell yeah, girl, you show that guy like, F you, I'm not gonna tell you, you know, who my mom is, like, <laughs> kind of thing, but we'll get into that. So this was definitely an episode where uh, the doctor was incredibly raw and very vulnerable and, you know, mentioning a lot like, I traveled to all these places. Like, this is my fault. I traveled to all these places because I thought it was fun. And here I basically just brought them death, you know? And so he's just really wearing this weight on him and blaming himself for this, uh, which he's just notorious to do in general anyways. And, you know, the girls are there to support him. And, he, you know, they're like, it's not your fault, dude. Like, you didn't make this happen. If anything, you saved billions of lives during your journeys uh, throughout time and space. But yeah, this dickhole that's, you know, been attached to your TARDIS, it's his fault that this is all happening. But of course he doesn't see it that way. And, you know, running into that woman who ends up giving him that spoon to give him that little bit of metal to help with the TARDIS. Uh, I did think that was really a very great moment. It gives you that time to breathe and to kind of sit with everything in the episode and to have that interaction with her and with her losing her memories and things like that. Um, it was it was really nice and really fresh. I really enjoyed that interaction. It was very heartwarming and it was really great to see at the end how we get that shot of her and her baby, how the baby's alive again and you know, they're living their best life, you know? And he's like, yeah, like I made that happen again. So that was a really great moment as well. And so they go forward in time and they are there to use that technology from the episode of 73 Yards. I think it was 2046 is the year with that terrible prime minister. So they go forward in time and Mel is acting very strange and it's because the angels of death and Sutek are putting their control over Mel to try to get this information. So it's basically like waiting for you know, Ruby to put her blood into the testing to then be able to get this name. He wants the name. He wants to know too, who the heck is this girl's mom? And as she's about to find out the name of her mom and she has like the screen in her hands, Mel comes in and she's all like angel of death vibe. You know, it's like completely taken over. And we find out later in the interaction once they end up facing Sue Tech, that the doctor had already assumed that this was happening because he could feel Mel's hands. He felt how cold they were and she was acting weird. And he's like, oh, 
she's being taken over. He like already knew. And so they had a game plan going on already to face this guy. So love that how Ruby takes the screen. She faces Sutek. She's like, you wanna know the name? You wanna know the name? Watch this. She just drops that bitch. And it breaks all over the place. And she's like, what? What? What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? And then they spring into action. It's like very like, it always happens in Doctor Who. He's like, let's go, let's do act, you know, plan B, plan B or plan A, whatever it is. Uh, and they're running and they got like the cord that's attached. He gets his whistle. He whistles to his TARDIS. And Sutek here thinking that he can manipulate and control the TARDIS. Dude, please, please. Yeah, right. So the TARDIS comes sliding in again here to save the day. They get this cord attached to Sutek, to his TARDIS. They hop in the TARDIS and they go back into that time vortex. So they are flying through there and they are restoring all of the timelines and all of the people. Because what do you do to face death? You face death with death and it gives life. And so as Sutek is like coming through, you know, like scratching the walls and all over the place in this time vortex, he is actually restoring all of these timelines and everybody is coming back to life. So love that. Then unfortunately the doctor's like, I've got to be a monster. This is now, it's like we fought a monster. Now I got to be a monster. He always usually has to make these really, really tough decisions and for um, talking about how he is life, where you know he is the epitome of life, whereas Sutek was death, he now has to become death. And so he cuts the cord and Sutek goes into the vortex and poof, he becomes into dust. Which I'm like, damn, like he is he dead now? Like is that just like he gone? Is he like gone gone? I don't know. I guess we'll find out in years to come when they do like a 70th anniversary or 80th anniversary of Doctor Who, Sutek could come back, who knows. <laughs> but he gone, okay, he gone. And so now we are gonna talk about Mrs. Flood because she comes back into her, from her dust form. She's coming back, she's with Sherry in the bed and she says, you clever boy, you clever boy. Who says that? Freaking Clara, which listen, all right, I had, a thought about this because I noticed what Mrs. Flood was wearing and I remember it was like that gray sweater with like the little lace like thing here and so I thought that looks just like something Clara used to wear so then when she says you clever boy you clever boy I was like okay that's confirmation this is Clara uh so that's very interesting although it sounds like this is like a very kind of a dark Clara. Um, she just seems always so ominous about things. Like we get this scene at the end with her in this like freaking lavish white coat and hat. She's like bougie with her little umbrella. She's talking and then she like gives us like ominous message at the end about <laughs> the doctor's not doing great. Um, <laughs> terror and you know, destruction and all this, you know, kind of a foreshadowing kind of a thing. So I'm like, Okay, Clara, where have you been, girl? What has happened to you? Last time we saw her, she was riding away in the TARDIS. Uh, I can't remember the girl's name, but they're flying into space. So we never saw her and she had like her own TARDIS and everything. So, I mean, it makes sense that we would eventually see her again at some point, but probably on that journey, she saw even more crazy things happening and that wears on a person clearly. And so, yeah, I, I'm just really curious to see um, her whole placement and where we are moving forward into. Cause this is just like kind of what they were mentioning. This is like the prologue, right? I feel like this is like a prologue into this new journey with the doctor. And so like we've, we have solved and put a little, uh, we shut the book on this Ruby Sunday mystery. We solved it. You know, Ruby's got her family with her. She met her mom officially, which I love how they talk about this and how her mom was just ordinary. And the fact that we put so much importance on her made her important, even to the God of death, a 15 year old who gave up their daughter uh, so the daughter could have a better life and she becomes a nurse and she's just living a normal life. She's just a normal human. And so it's so interesting. And, and so we put so much importance 
on her, which made her important. So Ruby's mom, she's totally cool. She's wanting to learn more about Ruby's life and be a part of it. It is sad at the end because Ruby kind of has that same realization with the doctor, like, okay, so I'm not continuing on with you. I gotta be here, I gotta get to know my family. I definitely don't think this is the end of Ruby's story and her interaction with the doctor. I definitely think she's gonna be coming back in the next season. Actually, I'm pretty certain she will be back. Sounds like I think the way that they wrote the uh, last episode of the second season is going to be pretty intense for Ruby. So we definitely know she's going to be in the second season. I am going to miss Ruby if she isn't going to be around for a while because I thought Ruby has done such a great job and has such great interactions with the doctor. And, you know, it's so precious how she says, I love you at the end. And he's so heartbroken. He doesn't want to leave her, but he knows that he needs to. And that's him showing love to her that yes, you know, you need to be with your family, you need to get to know them and have this time with them. So, we got some Sutek, God of Death. He is now Dedals. Uh, he died in the Time Vortex now. He turned into dust. We saw this, we witnessed it. Is he officially dead? Who knows? But we also got, uh, with him coming into this, this re-emergence of the pantheon of gods and he mentioned and listed them off in the last episode so it's very interesting to see how this is going to continue to play out i don't think we're done with this i think this is going to continue on even into the next season so i will definitely be curious to see what other gods that they're going to bring into this if they are you know we got mrs flood right so we got mrs flood who i think is clara and so that's an interesting thing and she's all free now and like she can continue on with her plans whatever those plans were so you know we'll see what that's about we got ruby she's gonna be staying with her family which i do think that they're you know she'll be coming back hanging out with the doctor and the doctor is on his own again traveling the cosmos i just have to say i really enjoyed this episode I found myself crying, like especially when Ruby finds her mom and comes face to face with her and is telling her who she is. I cried like a baby, I'm not gonna lie. It was so heartwarming and all of us were so invested because we've been waiting for so long, <laughs> just like Ruby, to have this moment, you know? And so I found myself crying in this episode. I was just fully in it and I loved how it all played out. So. Russell T, Russell T, my man, he wrote this episode. What a fantastic job. Uh, thank you for such a great finale episode. I really, really enjoyed it. Again, I'm very excited to rewatch this whole season now and just to see the flow of it and see if my opinion changes with some of the prior episodes now, given I kind of know how this is flowing. We'll see. I may still not like some and that's okay. It's okay to not like an episode of Doctor Who. Like it's okay to not like an episode of general of a show. It's based on opinion and your expectations and stuff like that. So, you know, it's fine if I don't, but overall, I think I really enjoyed this season. Uh, definitely a lot of twists, a lot of different interesting things <laughs> that happened. And yeah, I'm just happy with how it ended, but I want to know what you guys think. <laughs> Were you totally into this ending? Were you expecting this twist with uh, Ruby's mom? Did you know early on, even before I did, that Mrs. Flood was Clara? Or do you disagree with me? Or you're like, no, I think they're just saying that to throw you off. It's not Clara, it's so-and-so, whatever. I would love to know your thoughts on that. Do you think Sutuk is officially dead? I, you know, just let me know what you thought. Did you enjoy this episode like I did? Or did you think it was still terrible and it was a complete miss and you're still just, you know, thinking that they're just not nailing Doctor Who anymore? I really genuinely want to know your thoughts and tell me why, why you feel these certain ways. And let's get the discussion going. We've got a lot of time now between now and the holiday episodes. So we've got time to discuss. I will be definitely putting out some more content on Doctor Who, so definitely don't worry about that. Um, so if you are subscribed, awesome for you. We'll be we'll be now talking about Clara. We'll be you know going through this whole season again and just kind of seeing how we all feel after a good rewatch of everything and so much more. I know everybody says that, but really, so much more. I got so much more coming at you. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Again, 
what a great finale episode totally celebrating it and celebrating you guys thank you so much to all of my new subscribers it really makes me so happy to engage with new people i just started this back up a couple what like a month ago um and it's been so great just to be able to interact with other fellow nerds about this whether we agreed or we disagreed it's been really great so i appreciate you all so much for commenting and liking and subscribing and join, joining me on this new cosmic journey. So again, I hope you guys have a super awesome week ahead of you and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.